Hello, I am the Art Teacher and this is the Art Teacher Studio. Brought to you by Low Budget Presentation. Low budget means it's a one take operation. I don't really edit anything. So whatever happens, happens. And I set my timer so that I don't go past 15 minutes to make it short. Could be shorter than that. Uh, today, I'm working on a series that I'm doing for my uh, students at the school I work with, Dawson Elementary. This is a part of the Dawson Elementary series. And we're now talking about one of the elements of art, line. Using my crystal production uh, reference sheet here. So we're using line today in this art project. Now I'm not going to be talking too much about line itself because I've already done that in a previous video. This one is just going to be about the production end of it. And in this uh, particular case, uh, we're looking at movement and rhythm of the lines being used. And we're doing something called um, contour line drawing. Alrighty, here's some contour line drawings. This is an old uh, book that was going to be thrown away, out of print, uh, no longer um, used for anything. They were just going to throw it away, so I saved some pictures. Here you see some contour line drawings. Uh, some of them are more, more, more sketchy than others. That's okay. And here's another way of using some lines for um, woodland pictures, plants, something that you might see, some weeds growing up. And the contour line means it's a line that defines the, the shape of something. It can be just not just the outside, but the inside as well. Okay, and here's another one from the same book. Here you see a nice landscape and all the, look at all the different types of lines being sent. Now, everything is very lightly done, but you can still see how the landscape uh, is, has evolved through the use of lines, horizontal lines, vertical lines going up and down, diagonal lines, short lines, thick lines. Here's another one, which is kind of a um, fantasy landscape, if you will. You can see all the different type of lines. Even the background here is not colored in. It's, there's a bunch of lines that are close together. That uh, hatch marks are cross hatching. And then there's a lot of circling to get it darker. They didn't really color anything in. They just used a lot of lines to create that. Now, there is a, um, an artist. Let me show you here real quick. I, uh, one of my favorite artists. Oops, let's see if we can't get to this one right there. This is a portrait of Igor Stravinsky. He is a famous composer, and Pablo Picasso did this picture of him. And what we see here, I'm using the um, uh, art critique process here. I see a uh, line picture of a man sitting down in a chair with his arms folded and he's staring off to the our left um, and that's pretty much what we see and then we have the um, if we're going to look a little further that, that's the description now the analysis is I just see lines I don't see color I do see some shapes um, and I see a little bit of pattern in his tie, but nothing to speak of really. So the main thing in this picture is line. Now for the, uh, the other part, there's description, analysis, interpretation, is to now think what is going on here. Uh, it looks like he's waiting for something, maybe. It looks like uh, he, maybe he is deep in thought, but since he's a composer, maybe he's composing something in his mind, some musical piece. Um, or he could be anxiously waiting until um, Picasso says, you're done, you can move. I don't know. Um, but it seems like to me he's contemplating on his next musical piece, especially if you're looking at his fingers and his hands. And it looks like, uh, Picasso, oh, and the last part is uh, judgment. Judgment is, do I like it or not? And I would say yes. I really like the way the, the lines flow. And it gives, even though he is seated, it gives a sense of rhythm or movement to this picture. 
Um, some people may not see that, but that's what I see. Now, Picasso, when he did this picture, he did it with one line, I believe. Um, nope, sorry, he did not. It, he, he did pick up his uh, pen or whatever he used, and he did pick it up. But uh, there are some things that he did do with one line. For instance, let's see if you can guess what animal this was. You're right, it's a camel. And what about the next one? Correct, a dachshund. And this one? A cat. And can you guess this one? Oh yes, you've already started saying it, horse. And what about this one? Why yes, it's a turtle. You guessed it right. No, it's not a turtle. It's a fox or a wolf or a dog or any of those that might fit into that category with the legs and the tail and the howling. Here we have a donkey horse. No, wait a minute. Sea, sea donkey? No, wait a minute. Oh, seahorse. That's what it was. A seahorse. And now these are all done with one line. An owl. Can you guess this one? A parrot. Uh, looks like to me uh, maybe a crow. And a penguin. And now here's one he did really nicely. He combined a woman's head or face with uh, another bird. Maybe a dove. The dove's neck is a little bit too, a little shorter than that. And here is one which is one we're focusing on is a continuous line. One continuous line. So now what we're going to do here is do a continuous line drawing. Okay? Now you could do this by using a person's face, like my son's face. I could use this as an example. And it's best to get a picture that you can look at so the person doesn't have to stay still all the time. Uh, I am planning on using a calendar picture of a boy here and I've got a piece of paper and I'm going to use one of my favorite mediums which is a coloring stick and I'm going to try and do a continuous line drawing. Now I'm going to have to kind of put this picture off to the side because um, if I put it under too close well you just can't see it. I want you to see what I'm drawing mostly. Now, uh, what I'm going to try and do is try to draw this uh, child as best I can with one line without picking it up off the top. Now, this is a coloring stick that I've sharpened with a heavy-duty uh, pencil sharpener I got from uh, one of the hardware stores and um, sharpened it up. So I've got a little point there. Um, I'm going to start with the left side, left, or m the boy's right ear, but mine looking at it, the left side. I'm going to start over here. I'm going to turn my paper so it's a portrait, meaning it's going uh, vertical. <clears throat> Let's see what I can do here. And I'm going to start with the ear, with the little hair there. And I'm, I'm going to be doing it a little faster than what I would normally do because of time's sake. And come down to the cheek. And I can make uh, some of the lines thinner or thicker. And I'm always looking back at the picture here. Going back up to this cheek. And then that's where the ear is. But I'm going to stop there and I'm going to cut across to where the eyes might be. And there come back up again right there and I don't really see the eyebrows because he has blonde hair plus his hair bangs are going down over him a little bit so I'm gonna come down here to the nose and make the little nostril and have you noticed I haven't lifted up my coloring stick yet coming back up to this eye And right about there. Oh, a little too much. I'm going to go back in and make my little uh, pupil there, which I did not do on the other side. So that's going to be a mistake. One mistake I made right there, which I can go back and correct later. Now I'm going to come back to the nose so I can come back to the mouth. 
and he's kind of kind of thin lips here kind of trying not to smile in this picture and he does have kind of like these little lines here and let me zip across here I'm gonna go back tracing my steps I can go back to that eye now I'm coming back this way back to this ear so I'm gonna come back I haven't lifted my uh, coloring stick up yet so now I see some hair and the hairline and I don't have to draw all the hair that's coming down just a few spots to indicate that there are lines in the bangs and then up here his hair is frizzing a little bit and he's got hair coming down and I'm always looking back at the picture too Now when I come down here, I notice how I just come right back down here. I can't see his neck because of his clothes, but I'm going to try and draw some of the clothes he's got. And he's got kind of a hoodie on, a real thick hoodie. Jacket of some sort. And a string that comes here with a knot. You can backtrack. That's uh, that means you go back to where you were before using the same line and he's got a shirt with a little button there come up here come across there I'm looking up here just have fun with it by the way try not uh, oh your hand starts to hurt too because you are still um, pressing you don't want to lift it up takes a lot of concentration He's got that part here with the little knot. And now I'm doing this part of the hoodie and the jacket end here. Come back over here in the hoodie part. I'm just trying to draw the lines that I see. And I'm going to leave it like that. So there's the line. There's the picture I did. Now, I actually did his face a little bit too long. It's too long this way. But... And I'm not trying to get a likeness, really. I'm just trying to get an idea of a person's face. You could actually do one of everybody in your family. Just everybody, your pets, your, uh, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your dog, your cat, your fish. Uh, it, it is easier to take a photograph of it so you can have it on your um, electronic device and go from there. And if you do it with a crayon or something like this, you can actually watercolor over this. Now, you think that you can't do this, but you really can. And here's the little tricky part, if you want to try this, is do this again. I don't have time to show you today, but do this without looking at your paper. Now, some of you are going to think, well, how can I do that? How can I draw without looking at the paper? Well, that's when you get a box that you put over this part, but you can put your paper inside with your hand look at your object and then try to draw that but and the trick is is to go slowly if you can go slowly you can come up with some really cool pictures okay so that's all for me and i hope you had a lot of fun with this i hope you do have a lot of fun and do a lot of them not just one but do a lot uh, and because the more you do of them the better they get and once you get them done with either crayon or a coloring stick of some site uh, you can add uh, color by watercolor or markers but I will warn you if you do it with a marker a water-based marker and you try to watercolor on top of it your lines are going to just bleed away so make sure you get something that is colored fast like crayons watercolor won't mess with it um, coloring sticks watercolor won't mess with it so be sure you're aware of what materials you're using okay I'm hoping I'm just hoping that you guys will do a lot of these, and I hope to see them soon. Um, have a good day, and stay strong, stay safe.